Hello everyone and welcome to yet another Mail Month here on Steven Vlog. Today we are tackling October 2015. I'm fighting. I get it. The, I don't. <laughs> Whether you get Is that you like punching out the previous months and then the final one being this month? Sure. Sure. Although by the time this comes out, it may be time to do November mail. So it might just be kind of like a ah, tiny uppercut while we're getting ready for the, the last big swing before okay. we are completely caught up. Fair enough. Um, anyway, uh, today we've got uh, a very interesting mail month because there's a lot of mail from one person and this is probably not going to be one to miss. So if you're watching, go grab some popcorn and then come back because this is there's probably going to be a lot of mail on this one. Uh, first up is our featured leather and our featured leather in October is from David in Mesquite, Texas. And David writes, Dear Stephen, Mal, Sagan and Kepler, I've been watching both of your channels for three and a half years now and don't suspect I'll stop anytime soon. My name is David and I am uh, currently a sophomore in high school. Your videos have inspired me to pursue both video editing and possibly YouTube. I'm also planning to apply to SCAD because of your early vlogs and earlier work in general. On a different note, uh, is there any time you guys will be in the Dallas area and if so, uh, would you do a meetup there? Along with that, will you be going to PAX South 2016? Thanks for reading this leather and for everything you do. Keep it up. David. Uh, David, we were in the Dallas area, sort of. We went to Houston. And San Antonio. And San Antonio. Um, last summer for our um, road trip. And that is as close as we've ever gotten to, te well, that's to Texas. To Texas. <laughs> Drove through it just as close. That's as close as we could ever get. That's, a, that's uh, the only time we've ever been to Texas. And I'm not saying we'll never go back. We just don't have anything planned for right now. And that includes Pack South. We are not going to Pack South. Um, we're also not going to PAX East. Yes. So there may not be as many PAX events next year. We're still not sure if we're going to go to PAX Prime or not, but um, we're kind of taking it easy on, on PAX. Um, but is it likely that we'll do another meetup at some point in Texas? Yeah, it's possible. It's just nothing we have planned at the moment. Um, all right. So now we are going to get started on our, uh, on our packages. And the first package is from... It is from Sarah in Hoover, Alabama. And Sarah has sent us this little mailer envelope, which Mal is going to open now, and we will find out uh, what is inside. What is in there, Mal? Glad I didn't cut that one. That letter was right there. All right. The letter says, Dear Stephen, I don't know if you remember me, but I sent you guys a letter back in February that pretty much was thanking you both for everything that you do. Thanks for reading my letter in the uh, February Stephen Mail video. It really made my day. Well, your day is being made again. Uh, I looked through the video game collection spreadsheet on your website, and I noticed that you didn't have House of the Dead 2 and 3 returns. I have no idea if you got that in the time span of the last time I sent a letter until now, so if you already have it by now, I'm sorry for sending you another one. It's kind of like a Resident Evil spinoff. Well... It is a Resident Evil spinoff, but it's a pretty decent one at that. If you wish to do a first 20 of it, that would be great. If you don't, that's okay. I'm sending it to you anyway. Again, I appreciate everything that you and Mal do, and I shall write again soon from Sarah. P.S. My YouTube channel is Music Dragon Mountain, in case you forgot, if you feel that messaging me on YouTube is easier. I remember you! Um, it's Sometimes it's, it's harder to remember people's first names because so many people have you know, the same first name, but like no one else is called Music Dragon Mountain, so that helps me remember you. So yes, I do. Um, and you've sent us the House of the Dead 2 and 3 Returns. Now, I've never actually played this on console. Um, my my entire experience with House of the Dead is not really, I don't actually... Isn't it an arcade cabinet? Yeah, it's a, it's a light game, or light gun game, and that's how I've always thought of the House of the Dead. I actually, I don't really associate this with Resident Evil at all, to be honest. It kind of stands on its own in my, my mind. The only time I've ever played this on console, and I don't know if you knew that this game exists, but it's fantastic, Typing of the Dead. <laughs> Have you ever no, heard... I haven't. Can you think what that would be? Yeah, I can. And you know exactly what it yes. is. It's a, it's a game where... You're going through the house, just like in House of the Dead, but instead of a gun, you have a keyboard, and words come up. And you have to type the words, and it shoots the zombies if you type them. It's really good. It's for the Dreamcast. Oh, the Dreamcast. Oh, the Dreamcast. Um, and I think it also was re-released on Steam like a year or two ago. So, uh, Sarah, thank you so much for sending it in. That is, uh, that is awesome. And uh, honestly... A lot cheaper to play it on console than at an arcade where you'd have to dump yeah. tons and tons of quarters, so that's convenient. Once again, thank you. Our next package is from Alex in Washington, Pennsylvania. 
and I actually know exactly what this is. And we don't even technically have to open it on mail, but I think it would be cool because uh, he also if... included a letter. Oh, did he? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, fantastic. Uh, dear Stephen, hello. I'd like to give you one last thanks for helping me put this article together. My work has gained more attention than I could have possibly hoped for, and it's all thanks to you. But right now, I don't want to write professionally, but as a fan. I've been watching your channels for a few years now, and you have easily grown to be among my favorite content creators on YouTube. It's no wonder you've become so popular seeing the work you put into releasing videos every day. You and Mao have inspired me to try so many games I wouldn't have otherwise, bravely reach out into the YouTube community, and even start making some content of my own. Words can't describe how much I appreciate your work, so thank you, and keep doing what you do best. Your fan, Alex, or Sonic Boom. And the B in Sonic Boom is an 8. Um, also, P.S. I don't want to be that guy, but the rest of Undertale is amazing, and a blind LP would be fantastic. Uh, Alex, first off, thank you. And for everyone else who may be a little confused, uh, recently I posted a, a article on, I guess, both Facebook and, yeah. and Twitter. Um, where I was interviewed for a Pennsylvania newspaper and the person that did the interview was Alex and uh, he actually reached out to me a few months ago and said you know I'm, I'm interested in doing doing an article and would you be willing to, to do an interview with me so we took care of that we uh, we did a a uh, interview over Skype and um, he it, it, the article came out online, I got to see it, but I was like, you know, was this actually in a paper? And he said, yeah. And I said, if you would send it to me, that'd be fantastic. So, um, you can actually see, it's on the front page here, under, in the living section, it says, YouTuber gaining attention. And there's a small little picture of me, and there's uh, basically the write-up. And it says it proceeds into D2, which is on the other side. And it says George up there. You guys can see that, so. It's very cool and it's really neat. He sent you four copies. Yeah, I asked I asked him for a few copies just because um, I, I wanted to have one and I figured my parents would want one and Jarrett actually wanted a copy too because it was uh, his photograph. So I wanted okay. to make sure that he got a copy too. So Alex, um, thank you for reaching out to me to do the interview in the first place. It was a lot of fun. Your, you did a great job. Your article was fantastic. Like it just hit all of the key points that it needed to. <laughs> and uh, you already know that because you probably saw all of the response from like the Facebook comments and Twitter and stuff where people were like, this is great. And uh, it's actually one of the biggest posts I've ever had on Facebook. I think it was shared like 70 times or something. Like a lot of people wanted other people to read it. So you did a great job and I appreciate you taking the time to send uh, the papers to me as well. And if anyone else is watching and you haven't seen that article, uh, go over to the the Facebook page for um, Steven, me. For, for me? <laughs> I don't have a, the, the Facebook fan page and uh, the article should be posted there. And if I remember, I'll try and put it in the description as well. So Alex, once again, thanks. I appreciate that. So our last package is actually five packages. Um, we ha we received five different packages from Stephanie, uh, also known as Faustina Aurelia. Uh, she has sent amazing things to us in the past. Uh, it's extremely uh, giving, generous person. The most recent thing she sent to us was actually Endless Ocean Blue World, so everyone has her to thank for the return of Far Gothics, for better or worse. And uh, she sent us five packages all pretty much together. And we don't know what order they're supposed to be opened in. We don't know if any of them have letters or something inside. So we're just going to start opening them. With the smallest? We're just going to, yeah, work smallest to largest and see what happens. So you can see, this is the first one. That's the smallest. There's one, there's one over here that's gigantic. And it's also but... very heavy. Yeah, it's super heavy. So we're just gonna open it and see what happens. I'm not really sure if there's a particular thing. In the past, uh, she has sent us countless amazing books and, and Blu-rays and video games. Um, so she's always been very generous, very giving, and has sent us a lot of, a lot of uh, amazing things. So the first box is Once Upon a Time, the storytelling card game, which I have... Sorry, I was trying to get the bag Was off. it a ghost? <laughs> Um, I've never heard of this. It says, Tell Your Fantastic Tales of Brave Heroes and Daring Adventure. Once Upon a Time is the award-winning storytelling card game that encourages creativity and collaborative play. One player is the storyteller and begins telling a story using the fairy tale elements on her story cards, guiding the plot toward her ending card. The other players use their own cards to interrupt her and become the new storyteller. That sounds really cool. That sounds really, really neat. Uh, the winner is the first player to use all her story cards and play her ending card. So you have to, like... 
tell a story. It says the object of the game, though, isn't just to win, but to have fun telling a story together, which I really enjoy. It's kind of like D&D Lite, in a way. Oh, actually, there's a thing right here in the front. It's, award, it's an award-winning game. I've never heard of it, but I really like the concept. Like, that is a really cool idea. So there's a, you have a beginning and an end of the story, and the players have to fill in the rest. That seems really cool, so, cool, excellent, thank you so much. That is, that's box one of five. On to package two, as Mal gets this open, and there is, oh, it's another, oh, it's Koo. What? Koo Rebellion GS4? Is that what that says, Koo Rebellion GS4? This is a, sorry, when I think of Koo, it's always been like a tiny box, this is gigantic. Um, what did, what, hold on. I know this looks upside down to you, but it's right side up on this <laughs> side. Um, let's see. A standalone game set in the dystopian universe from the designer of Coup and the makers of the Resistance and One Night Revolution. Sequel to Coup. Same lightning fast rules. Interesting. Exciting strategic layer via character selection. What? Sorry. This one I want to just kind of pop open here. This is super cool. It's it's apparently the same idea as Coup, but fleshed out a little more. Peace peacekeeping, rebellion, crime boss. Newscaster, rebel. This is awesome. Cause I love Coup. Coup is um Coup has easily been one of the Do do we get it last year? Uh Dan bought it when we went to visit him and then we were like, we need this. And that was all last year, so Coup might might be might be the top board game I think I, I played in twenty fourteen. And to, to have it flushed out even further is really cool. Because we have Coup, we have Coup Reformation. Um, I, I actually have never heard of One Night Revolution, but that's another one. So there's a lot of, uh, lot of awesome stuff already. So board games seems to be the theme so far. Uh, but that is only two of five packages, so let's open up another one. Next up is package number three. And inside is... Whoa. What? It's heavy. Oh man, it's heavy. It's really heavy. It's another game. It's uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights, the legendary storytelling board game in the world of Aladdin and Sinbad. What? This is the heaviest board game I've ever had in my life. Like, this is so heavy. It says, Adventure, sail the seven seas with Sinbad, become the new, uh, funny word, Sh Shahrazade and match wits with a mad sultan. Find the fabulous treasures of Aladdin's cave of wonders. Seek love, honor, danger, and glory. All await you in the golden age of fable. Wow, this is crazy. The classic storytelling game returns in a huge new edition with an expanded book of tales containing over a thousand paragraphs of brand new, never before seen material, including new places of power, richer treasures, and spectacular deaths. There are so many board games, this is crazy. Also, once again, I, I how heavy would think this is? Probably like, over 10 pounds. Yeah. Over 10 pounds easy. Think of how heavy the cats are. Oh yeah. This is, this is this heavier than the cats? Both. I'm just really surprised how heavy this is. Either way, super cool. These are all board games I've never heard of. Besides Koo, kind well, of. Well, I mean, I know the kind Koo, of. yeah, the Koo series, but I didn't actually know that there was another version that was like big like that. Okay, three down, two to go. Use your strength. I can't. Use your strength. You. You have to believe. It's like that Pa Rapper the Rapper song. <laughs> Gotta believe. I can't. Gotta believe. No. That's a good game. We should first 20 that sometime. Did you get it open? No. <laughs> this is the biggest box. The reason we're doing the biggest one before the the, the other one is just for the fact Kepler. that Kepler. <laughs> Kepler is standing voice. on it on the couch. Uh, the other one was the last one we received. We're just we're still kind of opening them in the I order can't. we receive them. What's wrong? I can't. What's the problem? I can't. You can't cut it? No. What how it's tape. I tried to cut it. Was it super tape? It's super tape. It took a while, but I finally got that box open. And uh, I don't know if Kepler's gonna decide to try here. and jump in here. There's a leather in this one! Okay, that's exciting. Because there were so many different boxes sent that I wasn't sure when we would get to the leather. It was kind of like a a roulette of sorts because we just keep opening things and wondering if we're going to get to the leather next. Inside this envelope is, it says Mary Krampus. So, she was smart. She was like, you know what? They're really behind on mail. I'm gonna send Christmas stuff in October. We just happened to all of a sudden go and like catch up on mail really quickly. So this is actually some Christmas stuff. 
and it says, Dear Stephen Mallory, Merry Christmas. I'm not sure when you open this, but I guess it is never too early for Christmas. I recall you saying that you were interested in this for Stephen Place, so enjoy. I hope that you, Mao, and your family and friends have a lot of fun with the contents of this package. Happy thoughts, Stephanie, aka Faustina Aurelia. P.S. Expect one more thing and some things for your video game collection very soon. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And apparently, we were interested in this for Stephen Place, so I'm not really sure what that is. Stephanie didn't even talk about any of the other packages. Like, the fact that she sent all of these amazing board games. So, thank you for the board games. Um, and I guess now we get to open this and see exactly what is in uh -huh. here. Oh! Coup Reformation! Well, there you go. Actually, this isn't what we have. No, it's not. I thought we had Coup Reformation, but we definitely don't, because this isn't a nice box, and whatever we had was not in a box at all, so... Fantastic! Uh, thank you, Coup Reformation. Uh, once upon a time. So these are all of like the, um, I guess expansions. For other the, storytelling. Cards. Other storytelling things for Once Upon a Time. I know what she was talking about because I had um, expressed a lot of interest in doing board games on Steven Plays. Oh. That must be what she's talking about. The Exploding Kittens Not Safe for Work deck. And the regular one. And the regular one. I've heard really amazing things about this, and there was a big. There's a lot of stuff about it at PAX, but we never picked we never picked it up. And Stephanie came through, and there here they are. Corn salad for senpai. Oh man, it's normal love leather. <laughs> Believe it or not, we did not have normal love leather, and now we do. Thank you. That's Another a, expansion for Once Upon a Time. There's a lot. How can I have never heard of this game? It's apparently very, very popular. They've been making a lot of stuff for it. Sheriff of Nottingham, an exciting game of bluffing, bribery, and smuggling. Very, very cool. That's awesome. I don't know how I don't know about any of these games. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know about some board games, but apparently I'm missing out on a lot. This is uh, Masquerade, which is very, very cool. Masquerade. This is the expansion. The expansion to Masquerade. There are so many board games in here. Like, this combined with the fact that we um, just opened up all of those Game Box Monthly things, like, yeah, our, so many games. our board game collection just exploded. Like, it had already kind of exploded, and now that explosion just, like, blew up even further. So, like, there are so many board games. Like, we have enough game. board games that we could stop doing video game content on Steven Plays for, like, several months, and we'd have plenty of new material to do. So this is, um... Gloom. There's a game called Gloom. Cthulhu Gloom. Second Edition Gloom. I'm not exactly sure. It's some sort of card game. Here's more. So there's all of these different things for Gloom. Another Gloom. This is Fairy Tale Gloom. Never heard of Gloom. There's a lot of games I've I haven't seen heard it. of. I, I don't think I've even seen it before. I have. Okay. I recognize the art. Okay, so Gloom is in here. Scenes of Chance and Scenes of Chance 2, a billion adventures in the palm of your hand. Whether you're looking for inspiration or need to create a scene on the fly, Scenes of Chance is the perfect storytelling tool. Interesting. Oh, that's cool. Inside you will find a deck of large scale cards, each depicting an elegantly illustrated scene. Each scene has several icons on it and will directly correlate to a, var a variable chart of 20 possibilities and you just roll a d20 and there you go. It's like, it's like a map maker. Yeah, it's, it's like an easy way to jump into a, um, like a D&D &D game if you wanted to. You could use these for D&D &D where you just, you roll a D20 and it like sets a scene. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Here's some more gloom. And even more gloom. I don't know if I'm, I'm ready for that kind of thing in the DMing department because I'm still kind of new to it, but I'm really enjoying it and I think that I'll get there pretty soon. Betrayal at House on the Hill. Now I have heard of this. I've never played it, but I've heard of Betrayal of House on the Hill. Man, there's so many, there's so many board games. Holy cow. I'll put that over there. And this is Winter Tales, a game of storytelling and imagination for three to seven players. Uh, I don't think I've heard of this one. This one is also different. Holy cow. Wow. 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 Um, for those who are unaware, I just pulled out one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. It looks like 25 different things between, uh, from the four packages that Stephanie has sent so far. Like, there's, there are so many board games. There are so many board games. And yet. <laughs> and yet there is one more box. So let's open up the last box. Finally, last but certainly not least, oh, uh, there is a fifth box, and in the box is packing peanuts. <laughs> it's a puzzle. Oh my god, is it a puzzle? It's a puzzle. It is a puzzle. Let's carefully pull this out. There's a lot of packing peanuts in here. It is a 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle of the infamous the Great Wave, Great Wave uh, image. Man. Man. <laughs> People really want to see us do more puzzles. <laughs> okay, all right. That's a great image, by the way. That's really cool. And then down under here is Mysterium. Not really sure. It says, will you dare to cross the threshold of the haunted Mysterium Manor? Very, very cool. Step inside, be seated, and let your institution... In intuition. Institution. institution. Let your institution guide you. Let your intuition guide you. Man, okay, um, wow, wow, uh, that is a lot of board games. I mean, that is a lot of board games. Um, I, I kind of want to show them, but I'm not 100% sure we can hold them all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them to you to oh. hold because it makes me smile that you will have to stack them. Just stack them like this. Just hold them like that and see if I can get all these. Yes, give Mallory all the large ones. Well, that's the idea, yeah. Um, that one's too heavy to give you. Let's do this. Thank you. See, I'm thinking of you. Maybe. Oh, that, see, that one's, that one's heavy. I put the jigsaw up here. Jigsaw goes there. Jigsaw is sliding off. And then maybe these. And then some of these. Good choice. It's a really poor <laughs> this choice. This was a poor choice. All right, can you lift those up? You're doing great. Looks looks great. Um, that is half. That is half of the of the board games. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much, and I won't make you hold these. I thank promise. You. Um, that was extremely kind and very generous. These, this is probably the most board games I've ever gotten for Christmas ever, and probably the most I ever will get for Christmas. This is there are so many games. Um, but she's right. I had talked about wanting to do some board games on Steven Plays. And that is something I legitimately wanted to do and still want to do. I wanted to do board games. I wanted to um, maybe get to the point where I can show off some D&D &D stuff. Although that, may, that might go on the vlog. I'm not sure. And uh, also Paper Magic. Because people have been enjoying Magic Duels and I think it would be fun to do Paper Magic. So. Oh, you mean like card magic. Yeah. It, <laughs> Pen and pencil magic. Where you make up your own cards. <laughs> you make... And uh, for two mana, I pull in a 2020 creature that is Death Touch unlockable. I like how you could have made it like free or cost one, but you still gave it a two cost. <laughs> Had to be fair. Had to be at least a little fair. Uh, seriously, Stephanie, this is uh, this is incredible. This is there are so many board games. I don't know when it's going to happen, but uh, at some point, uh, I would like to start devoting some time on the channel to doing board games. The downside to doing the board games is that they take a lot more time to produce, like in terms of editing and, and things like that. Um, but once we get the channels a little more stabilized, once vlogs get more caught up, I definitely want to uh, to go through some of these and uh, get the get the setup for it in terms of like recording a, a game to make it look really nice. But yeah, and when we do start, we have the games for it. And we have plenty of material, so thank you so much. I this is this is a lot. This is a lot of stuff, um, man. Okay. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have something you'd like to send in, you can. There's a link down in the description box below. They'll tell you where you can send it. And uh, for everyone who sent something in this month, thank you. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, this was October's. Yes. Um, we are trying to stay caught up, so anyone who wants to send in stuff for Christmas, uh, we will probably be able to open it. 
before Christmas. If you send it in the month of November, and by, this may actually come out so late, I don't know, but um, November or, or December, whether we're gonna try and get it open at least close to Christmas. Even if it happens after, it's gonna be not far after. We promise we're not gonna be opening your Christmas presents in you know April, I promise. We're not gonna let that happen. Um, there were some people, like Stephanie you know, said, they're late on mail, so I'm just gonna send it all now, and that's fine too, but if you guys send stuff, uh, we're gonna do our absolute best to make sure that we open it before, or at least not far after Christmas, so we get it about the time you expect us to. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, um, and I, I guess we'll see you guys next time for... Uh, Stephen Mail, November? November. And in the meantime, uh, I'm gonna have to figure out where to put all of these games for now because we, we have a lot of games. We're gonna have to like, you know, eventually when we get into a bigger place, we can have a game closet. Yeah. 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 Like we've we obviously we've collected a lot of video games and we have a ton, we have a ton of video games and we need more space to even present those. Mm -hmm. But um, at this point, we've got so many uh, board games that we're gonna have to have a board game closet or a board game shelf or something. Because we also, that's a big thing we do too. Yeah. Man, we play video games, we play magic, we play board games, we play d and I think we're like encompassing all of game gamerness. I think we've got most of We really of don't play card games, like poker. Yeah, I don't know how to play poker. But if we ever get that figured out, then we, we got we everything tried to get covered. That figured out. Yeah, I was not very good at poker. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time for more Steven Mail.